Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Matt and welcome to a race that I'm not actually in this week. This is the Tuesday signature series or spec racing series where we all drive the same car and see whoever comes out on top. This is Kyoto Driving Park Miyabi with the Mazda Touring Car, the Mazda Roadster Touring Car. Regardless, it is based off of the uh, 1989 Miata NA, the first generation Miata, and already, as you can tell, it is a very spectacular race, as Bulldog unfortunately hits the curb just around and goes straight into the wall here. The roster for this week, or for this race specifically, is Red, who is a friend of the league, Flanders, Shio, make him star, and Bulldog. And as we can see here watching from Magnum's perspective, it's really fun because you can see kind of what goes on behind the driver's eyes. You can see, okay, you know, do we really want to break late here? Do I really want to push and move there? Do you want to uh, see if I can be a little bit more conservative and wait for a moment later where I can really catch on up? And if we look at the radar, we've got Bulldog who's already coming on up, starting to get close to the pack once again we've got magnum who's given shio just a little bit of a push down the main straight using that slipstream using that boost to make a beautiful pass on the inside as he's now starting to look up the inside up on flanders this is going to be the beginning of some chaos here as bulldog is starting to come within the frame we still have shio very close by flanders is trying his best to catch up to red and we got Shio, if we just saw for a moment, dart onto the inside in those mirrors. And Bulldog again, too, is coming up on the inside. Almost just gives him a little bit of a tap. And Magnum is starting to look really close on the inside. Take those apexes very well. That last apex right there that we just went over. Apparently, you can do some absolutely egregious cutting. And you don't get any track limits or any penalties for it. So we'll see a lot of really daring passes around the very final corner of that chicane there. As again, we've got Bulldog up in uh, Magnum's mirrors. Bulldog was measuring up, hey, where can I get some, where can I take an opportunity to really dive up? And there he goes. Magnum sees it, goes a little bit early, allows Bulldog to make that very clean pass up the end side. And now we've got the four of them. Flanders, Shio, Bulldog, Magnum, fighting it out. The gloves are off. We are now witnessing a very, very spectacular battle as Red flies off into the distance. Shio is now looking up on the inside of Flanders. We got a little bit of understeer into Bulldog, but no contact by the looks of it. Bulldog sees what happens and makes an incredibly defensive move there, says, no, this is my line, you get the hell out of here. Shio takes up the corner just a little bit, upsets the car, and loses it completely straight into the wall, out of the picture, but not for long. Flanders is now dealing with Bulldog coming up on the inside, there's no contact, it's very close, Bulldog just comes back a little bit, and we've got Magnum coming up very quickly is able to make that pass up into third bulldog is still there though as magnum drops the gear into third high revs gets a little bit of a cleaner line and again there's bulldog in the mirror coming around the outside not quite yet but this line through here catching up to flanders is oh so close what an epic battle we have here so far and as much as Magnum didn't want to make that pass, he's a little bit, a little bit conservative there. Bulldog says, nope, you're going through. My friend gives him a little bit of a bump, pushes Magnum up into second just for a moment because Flanders is there on the left side. He is saying, nah, my friend, this is where I belong. But Magnum here again is still on the inside, does not want to give up that place there. And the three of these guys are going neck and neck. If you see on the bottom radar, got a little bit of contact between Flanders and Bulldog. As now we're going to go skip down to Flanders here. He's got a little bit of an issue on the curb. Bumps into Bulldog just slightly. Gives him off the track. Collides with Magnum. Bulldog is still up. This car is upset. Spins out. And then suddenly Flanders is scratching his head going, Well, how did I make up two places like that? Beginning of lap 19, we set back our perspective back to Magnum. 
who has a little bit of an understeer into Flanders, but doesn't have any too bad of a collision there. Red is back in the picture, not because he made any mistakes, not because he lapped everybody, just he is being a little bit more friendly and decided to ease up and try to get closer to the battle. It gets real lonely up there, up in the front. So keeping everybody nice and close together is always a welcome change. We've got Flanders. Keep your eyes on Flanders for this next part. It is amazing. So Shio goes around the apex there, cuts some grass. Flanders goes wide, cuts the apex as well, grabs some grass, upsets the car, and in an incredible move, an um, com a completely unfortunate move, shoves his car right down into pit lane. Has to serve a pit. But again, with this spec series, there are no pits. You don't need to change fuel or tire or anything. So I can only imagine what that voice chat sounded like in that moment. What an incredible moment by Flanders. Again, and completely unlucky, absolutely traumatizing. But man, oh man, what an incredible moment. For the sake of time, we will not go through each and every battle that this group had. Again, the entire replay was just amazing to watch as these four individuals go hand-to-hand -hand combat with these Miata Roadsters. On the second to last lap, Shio once again is cutting the corners very close, upsets the car. He actually keeps it on the track. You can see him looking up on the mirrors. He's not out of the fight yet. And there he goes again, spins out. What an unfortunate moment as his tires are coated with grass and was not able to keep it back up on the course. We are now going over the line. Lap 29. This is it. We've got a very close fight for second place. Three incredible drivers all have their misfortunes this race. But at this point, it is not over until it is over. And actually at this moment, rather than watching Magnum, we're going to swap back down to Flanders to see this from a third perspective. Bulldog goes wide. Magna comes up on the inside. He can smell second place. And again, the egregious quarter cutting has, in fact, worked. He's gotten a better exit. So then Bulldog is saying, no, 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 that is my second place. You give that right back. And then we've got Magnum up in second, Bulldog in third, Flanders in fourth, and Shio brings it home quickly in fifth. All right, and welcome to our endurance multi-class race for Thursday. This race was going to be a fun one. It is around Watkins Glen. And I am in Group 1 with the Porsche 919. So if you guys have been following, we've been um, changing up our cars every week a little bit. I've been wanting to stay with Nissan. It's just not been working out with the Group 1 category. And as you can tell, I immediately, I mean immediately get a one and a half second track limit penalty here. I was able to very nicely qualify in fourth place in Group 1. I'm not really known for my qualifying but uh, it seemed to work out pretty okay this week. So, part of uh, our series is that we can never make up our minds. We're always just slightly changing the rules, just trying to fine-tune it to make for the best experience for all of us. Now, originally, it was going to be four different groups. It was going to be Group 1, Group 2, Group 3, and Group 4. But with only 12 or 11 people, we wouldn't necessarily always have all the people show up. And there would be problems where we'd really just be like for each of our three teams, it'd only be one person per group. And to be honest, the racing was really lonely because you would be trying to fight against the other two people in your relative group. But they're on different strategies or they've got different tunes on their cars. Long story short, we consolidated it. So now we're only running two different groups per week. So with this week, it is group one and group two. I should really think about this ahead of time because I just found this out like as I'm recording this voiceover, who my competition was for this week. It's just we have so many people in so many different cars. It's hard to keep track of who everybody is and where they are. So my competition was going to be Berserker and Omar, who would be on Berserker's team. Then it would be, unfortunately, uh, Bulldog didn't have enough people on his team, so it would just be Shio, who would be representing Group 1 for Bulldog's team. 
And then we've got Gotta Go Fast and myself in my team representing Group 1. And everybody else would be in the Group 2 category. One of these days I'll make a graph or something for you guys to see so it's less confusing. But anyway, if anybody cares, that's what the rules are. So I phoned down to order a little bit. I'm starting to feel a little bit more comfortable with the car. I mean, the hard tires are doing all right. I was mainly testing the hard tires during practice and whatnot. So I'm feeling pretty decent. But with this update, with this physics update that has recently happened, I'm still learning how these cars react. I've got Paven coming up behind me. He's definitely on a flying lap. And I'm just like, you know, call out your spot. Tell me where you want to go. Call it where you want it, Paven. Nah, go ahead. I'll tell you when I want to come back. How about right now? Yeah. Fast! <laughs> God. <sighs> That's troublesome. And this is part of the thing that I hate about this update, is that when you get into the grass... I mean, it's very realistic. I'll, I won't blame him on that. Incredibly realistic. That... When you get in the grass, or you fall off the course, or you get in the gravel, you have literally no traction. You try to spin the wheels, and it's like your car is a magnet to the wall now. At least previously, there would be you'd be able to like use the rear wheels to spin the car around to get it out of the wall, but now you just physically can't get anywhere close. So, hitting the wall twice. I got a massive three-second penalty. I'm up here against Omar. He's got a half-second penalty. He's got the place, and it's just like, you know, at this point, I'm kind of letting it go, where it's like, I'm going to have more mistakes. I know it. But with this race, you can't always count on just raw pace. You know, you got to think strategically. You got to think about the pit stops. You got to think about the other people around you. You got to think about your teammates and all this other stuff going wrong. So at this point, I've conceded this place to Omar. I am definitely last place in group one as I've only got two people behind me. So being in ninth place on lap four in a group one car is definitely where he shouldn't be. So Omar takes his half second penalty, immediately shoots off in the distance. I grab mine and I'm like, all right, here we go. And the very next corner, Omar snags the grass and suddenly I'm in next place. I'm in fourth place out of five in group one. So I'm like, wow, cool. Lap 11. I've made up quite a few more places. I'm now up into fifth. So as far as the group one category goes, I am in fourth. And people around me, mainly the group twos, have done the pit stops. Group ones haven't necessarily done a whole lot of theirs. But I had Gr Drew come up behind me. And even though that he's group two and he's in a different race than me, he's definitely faster. I'm trying to think, you know, we're talking over the internet comms about where we can let him pass because I don't want him to hold up his race. If he's faster, he's faster. Again, it's a little, it sucks, especially when you're in technically a faster group. But then you've got somebody else coming up who's in a lower group who's then needing to pass you because you're just not keeping up pace. I mean, it hurts the ego quite a bit. But what is a little bit redeeming is I'm now using Drew as a reference marker. I'm looking at him going, all right, so where is he breaking? Where is he, you know, starting to put down the power? And it's cool because his lap times were anywhere between the 130s and 132s. Honestly, that is what Group 1 is running, so, which is why Group 2, these two guys, Praven and, and Drew, are doing such an incredible job is because they're technically keeping up with Group 1 in a lower group. So I am using him as, as kind of like a ghost in lap time or, or in the time trials. I'm focusing on him and trying to keep pace and to be fair, I'm actually quite proud of myself. You look at my lap times, I'm getting into the 132s, 133s, so definitely following Drew is helpful. Until I've got this tiny mistake where I just break a little bit late, I coat my tires with marbles, I put on the power a little bit too early, and then I spin out straight into the wall. At this point, I'm focusing on trying to relap Omar, and that's been my point here, is trying to get back around him. I've got Ring who 
kind of spins out into the wall. He had a rather difficult race, and I'm noticing here, you know, it's about time that I finally make my pit. And as you saw there, didn't even bother to, you know, coordinate with the line, so I get a massive penalty there. And this was kind of an interesting thing. So as the voice chat was going, a lot of people were making a lot of comments about, you know, they get into the pit lane and they go, oh, I forgot X, or oh, I can't believe that I did this. Shio talked about how he forgot to hit the refuel button, so he had to do another lap and do another pit and do it all over again. Or, you know, the very beginning of the race, a lot of people were talking about how they accidentally had the wrong tire strategy on, where they were running stops for the first three laps, and they're absolutely completely gone by the time you know, the pit stop came around. So there was just a lot of these really weird kind of jinxes or curses going around. And I thought I was doing okay until I get a Ron tire selection. Going into the pits, I was debating, all right, should I do mediums? Should I do hards? And honestly, I was thinking about running a little bit long and then, you know, for a shorter strategy at the end, I go to mediums. But at this point, lap 18 was pretty, it was just on the other half side of the race. So I was thinking that it probably could be a little bit more safe with doing hards. And that was going to be my choice. And then I picked medium and I go, you know, it's not the end of the world. I'm probably going to be okay. And, and it gives me time to work on the medium tires. I'm sitting there going, you know, if I'm on a better tire than I've been all race, I should really take this moment to look at setting some really good lap times. And honestly, the medium tires weren't too shabby. I want to point out here that Bulldog, who is in group two, makes a pit and he has a little bit of fuel that he throws into his car, puts on some new tires. And again, he's not in the same race as me, but because my ego has been bruised so many times in this race, I am just looking at such a minuscule thing that doesn't even matter anymore. I'm looking at the big number in the corner saying, all right, I am in sixth position out of 11. I want to finish as high as I possibly can. I don't know who's on what pit stop strategy or whatever, but I just want to finish as high as I can. I don't even know what team Bulldog is on, what group he's in, but I saw he pit. I saw I came out in front of him. I said, all right, let's go. Let's do this. And with this is the interesting part. This is why tire choice is so interesting. Because earlier when I said it probably didn't matter all that much, we're getting to the point of these tires lives that they're really starting to fall off terribly. And as you can tell with the last couple of laps, I had, you know, the 132s, the 132s, and I have a 134. And it's like, well, that's, that's not good. So I see that Bulldog had pitted, and at this point, I'm seeing this gap between myself and himself very quickly decreasing. And as you can tell, if you look at that heart rate monitor, I am going at it. I am so focused on making sure that there's a chance that I can finish in sixth. Whatever sixth means, I don't know. And I've got that moment where that would be on turn five, I want to say. Yeah, turn five, where I just go a little bit wide, collect a little bit of a penalty there. And I'm sitting there going like, oh my God, this is not helpful right now. <laughs> I know that Bulldog is, I think he's doing a pass on Magnum as we speak. And I'm going, you know, there's a chance that I can still be in front of him. I think at this point, I'm starting to have this realization that this race that I'm having with myself is not going to end up the way that I want it to. But I want just because I want to see if I can pull this off. It gives me that last little glimmer of hope saying, hey, you know, I did something well today. And when you look at the big picture, Finishing second to last in your group isn't great, but sixth overall, seventh overall, it's not too bad. I'm losing focus slightly, where I'm looking at that time between myself and Bulldog, and I'm, I'm just scaring myself. I coat my tires a little bit with dirt, 
and get into the bus stop. I'm trying to cut it as well as I've ever cut it before. Not too bad. And then this is actually kind of humorous. I see Bulldogs coming up, and at this point, I'm kind of... Okay, yeah, I immediate penalty for turn five again, of course. And I can go, you know, Bulldog, just take it. Just, just take it. It doesn't mean anything, but, you know, for me, it meant so much in that moment. Just having this imaginary race with somebody who was in a lower group. And there we go, having to serve that last penalty. I just... <laughs> Whatever keeps you motivated in the moment. I find it really interesting looking back on it now. These races that we make up for ourselves, these goals that we make up in the moment to keep our focus and to keep... I almost have a moment again to turn nine at the last second. But it's just in retrospect, it is so interesting, psychologically speaking, what drives a person, what... Oh, yeah, and then I have a moment in turn 11, literally at the last second. I'm just like, you know what, whatever. My heart is still through the roof as I'm running off of adrenaline with that race with the Bulldog. But like I was saying before, it's interesting to see, psychologically speaking, what drives a person during competition. Because that's something I don't think we really talk about much, is that mindset, what we think about, what we're thinking about. Let's think about what we're thinking about in these moments so very unique race didn't place as well as i wanted to but we look at the big picture you know my team did very well in this race and then we'll be able to look back on this day and say wow what amazing results our team collectively got let's let's be happy about that and here we are in our sunday race this one is Dragon Trail Seaside Reverse in 700 PowerPoint front engine rear wheel drive cars. This was actually kind of an interesting one that came out of nowhere. I was thinking about it throughout the week, not really focusing much on it. And then finally you got to Sunday and said, you know, I should probably practice this a little bit. And I spent most of Sunday rolling back the European Classic car, my BMW M3, and rolling back this course. We've got this moment here where Ring screws up the death chicane, and I am sitting back in eighth place. I'm trying my best to keep it nice and easy. I know all the tires are cold. I know everybody's got their adrenaline kicking up that they want to make great places on the first lap. And I'm sitting there going, like, I don't want to be a part of any of it. Just like, you guys do these crazy dive bombing moves. I'm just going to stay right out of your guys' way. I do not want to be collected up in these problems. And it's interesting, as we're talking, is it seems like the server was having issues at this moment. As we've got so many issues and Bulldog gets collected up. I somehow do not get any penalties. I somehow do not get completely ruined as I just beautifully bounce off the wall perfectly back into seventh place the server was having issues there was a lot of a lot of us were commenting about how specific people were glitching out but then it's like when you look at the big picture a lot of people were like having these weird stutters and where they're kind of going side by side as you can see here with flanders and again just this race in general is just so interesting for a lot of different reasons like i was seeing before i was spending most of uh today really just working on rolling back the European classic car. I wanted to figure out how the physics was working versus like the forward track versus the reverse track. Pre 1.49, I had a best lap in that BMW M3 of a 147 going forward. And then I couldn't get anything better than a 152. And then reverse, I couldn't even beat a 155. So it was just absolutely interesting to see no matter how differently i tuned the car no matter how differently i did everything it just didn't seem to matter so we come into this race and i choose the toyota ft-1 vgt and the reason why is this was the car that i chose for a previous season that i didn't have recorded where shio and myself had tuned up this car did a no-stop race on spa we were just out in the distance and just really this car drove fantastic so i was wondering if i could resurrect it a little bit and i think uh berserker got wind of that and he also chose this car 
So uh, during the practicing that I had, I was able to talk with them a little bit, and we were able to get a pretty good tune as I almost have a problem. And that will be kind of a re recurring theme here is the amount of times where I almost have a problem. And here's Berserker himself. Again, we've got the same tune, the same car, but man, was he throwing down some crazy laptops. Or he was getting easily into like the 141, 142s. I think the best lap that I did was in qualifying where I did like a 143. But in all honesty, I was very consistently like the 146s. And that was because I wasn't using the overtake button during all that. So that was the nice thing with this car as well is that we did have our own little boost, our own little NOS that we were able to use. So when we really need to throw down some lap times, really make up some places, we could use that. So that was really the main point why Shio and myself chose this car way back when. So I didn't have to do too much setup difference, but we're coming into the death chicane once again. And again, instead of just throwing it down deep, trying to go three wide or whatever, I'm seeing that people are having these issues here. And I'm going, you know, I'm just... I'm trying to race as smart as I can today. There are so many races where I could have gotten so much more aggressive and I'm just sitting here going, you know, I just, I want to survive. I don't want to have those instances like Jay just had there where he just gets pushed off into the wall. I want to be smart. I want to race clean. Let's see what we can do here. And this is really fun too, because this race, we have to do a pit stop at some point. And I'm thinking, you know, as per usual, just throw it in about halfway and we've got junior who just slightly falls off the track there as far as the strategy goes here actually before we talk about strategy we've got three people coming up behind me real close there and i was slamming on the brakes early to see if they could go around the outside i'm focusing on them so we go a little bit wide on the entrance to that next corner there they've got shio right in front of me he's talking about at some point he talks about it, he's got issues with his tires i don't think that's quite yet but I'm sitting there going, you know, we're about to enter lap four. I've got a lot of people who are really close behind me. But the fact that I haven't had any crucial mistakes where I haven't really fallen off the course and, you know, had these massive penalties. For those who did, we do have boost on, so that is able to get them quite a bit closer. Bulldog goes late, late, late on the brakes. And I'm going side by side with him. He's trying his best to try to eke out right in front of me. And I'm just keeping it in, keeping it in, keeping it in. And then at this point, I go, you know what? Screw it. I'm not going to try doing too wide to the death chicane again. It just, there's no point. And that's part of these fights that I'm having where it's, yes, I can put my car in anybody's way. Be ultra defensive. But what's the outcome what's the point if you do that you're putting yourself more in danger of them maybe having a server flicker or something where they suddenly collide with you you know as much as i want to race clean and close and you know well i wouldn't say clean but as much as i want to be aggressive and drive in people's doors and all the rest of it, it seeing these people around me and seeing all the issues we've had already just by lap four and i'm going you know and maybe it's just not worth it let's just try to race as fast as we can but then when we've got people like jay who want to come up on the inside just say hey do you want it i'll let you have it seems like you want it more than i do and that was the fun thing at this point because jay and myself were running you know similar car well identical cars should i say you know whenever he gets up in front of me i'm just trying to learn his line and unfortunately he's got some issues where the power is just this is actually a fairly oversteer happy car so being very, very precise on the throttle, you know, if you go, it's very interesting to watch it in certain corners where if you put it down like halfway through the corner, it will just slide out super bad. So it's just trying to find that perfect moment where you can get the car straight enough where you know the rear end isn't going to kick out as bad as it will and you're just able to keep it on. And here we go once again, back through the chicane. And how do we do? Not too bad, not too bad. And we've got so many people, if you look at our, I don't know if this is on radar, but if you take a look at our big map, we've got everybody so close up in front and we've got everybody so close in back. So the boost is working wonders today as we've got all sorts of drivers going nuts all around us.
And as we come up the top of the hill here, this is a very technical point where we're just trying our best to make sure that we hang on to it. I've go a little bit wide as I got a junior coming in on the inside there. I've got like three people right on my bumper and they're all looking up for the inside. So I'd say, you know, screw it. I went wide purposely allowing all that room. Nobody took it until Jay followed by Ring. Jay slides off once again, and now I'm just hunting down Ring. And then we've got Bulldog coming up on the inside. He's looking for it. Ring goes wide. He's got some issues with the curb. And then I'm watching up ahead as Paven has got to serve his penalty. I, he comes back out of Ghost, go right around him, and now I've got like four people coming up fast. Again, trying to be as smart as possible. I'm now just saying, you guys go have fun. You all go dive up on the deep end. And they all went, both Ring and Bulldog went deep, deep on the inside. And now we've got two people behind me as well, three actually, all trying their best to get as much place up right before the death chicane. And I'm sitting there guy saying, back out, guys, back out, back out. We don't want to have this fight right, right now. Rain has got an issue where he taps the wall, gets an immediate one and a half second penalty. And that is exactly why I was telling people to back out because we can be close and tidy as we want through the death chicane. But as soon as somebody screws up, it leaves little to no room to react to those problems. A little bit later, Shio dives in on the pits. Bulldog had done so a lap earlier, and I've been chasing down Paven and Berserker. Thankfully, Berserker has been doing a little bit better. We've got some really weird internet issues where Paven goes wide and pushes Berserker, and I've got this really weird snap where I can't correct the car, and then suddenly does, and it turns out it was Paven who had uh, corrected it. So down the next straight, I'm looking in my rear view mirror. I'm pulling off over to the side. I'm you know, laying off the gas early and I said, Paven, man, I screwed up bad. Yeah, we're not doing team races or anything tonight, but I just, you got to take that place back. I, I'm not okay with how that happened. And he goes, thank you very much. I will uh, take that and much obliged. Halfway through the race, I've got just a little bit scrubbed off the top of my hard tires, a little bit under half. I am following Paven into the pit lane. And at this moment, I decide, you know, I'm going to take some hard tires because that's all I can take at this point. The, the power point limit was just uh, too low, high. I'm not sure how that works. So change out from hards to new set of hards. And then I have about 45% of fuel remaining. And I just wait for it so I can get about 60 or so. So that way you don't have to adjust any fuel limits or anything. I can just run as hard as I had been before. And immediately you've got some issues with the tires being cold as all hell but we we're able to keep up rings coming up behind me saying hey i'm coming up on you usb trying to aggravate me a little bit which i'm like look man i'm on cold tires we're about to go through the chicane of death like when you want the spot just let me know because there's no way i'm going to be able to compete with you He's running the fastest laps of like 134s, and I'm running my fastest lap was a 145. So I'm like, just, just take the spot, man. <laughs> then an interesting moment here in lap 11. I'm sitting down in eighth place, going, I feel like more people should have pitted, but I'm focusing on catching up to Junior, catching up to the pack. And at this moment, I'm going around the corner and I get a buzz on my watch and I lose focus at the wrong moment at the wrong time and I screw up right into the wall and I'm kicking myself horribly because ever since I added the heart rate monitor, I've been having to wear the Apple Watch, which is fine. I've been smart enough to put it on airplane mode so I don't get any notifications during the race and I forgot to this time, so really just small little things that I should have thought about prior to before you know getting to this race so in all honesty that only being my second mistake really and yeah it had some pretty bad impacts or pretty bad lasting uh, impacts shall I say because when we get later into this race we'll see really how close it got Beginning of lap 17, I am chasing down Omar and his Need for Speed BMW M3, which I am absolutely loving. 
and both of us are catching up to Shio. Shio's making mention that his tires are just not there anymore. They're really struggling. So Omar and myself have been trading places. since we've got into this pretty good rhythm where I have just been kind of chasing him down. At this point, I'm thinking, okay, so Shio said something about his tires being gone. Omar's probably going to get that podium place, unless if he screws up. So I'm trying my best to stay in contention with these guys, because I know if Omar's got a mistake, and this is after the fact that we we're able to pass up Shio, I could be in third place already. And if you look at these times here, I think at this point, it, we're about seven seconds from first place. And I'm looking at my lap times, and yeah, they've been kind of all over the place. But I think if you take a look at the averages, where I was able to get probably about a 143 on most averages. So we've got Shio, who's breaking. He's, again, still talking about his tires. And as we're going through... I'm noticing that I've got people coming up behind me. It is all of everyone. I've got Flanders and Bulldog and Paven all coming up as we make a nice clean pass on Shio. I lose focus slightly and I have a very poor exit that costs me dearly. If I had a much better exit, I don't think I would let all five of these people come past at this moment, but they're coming by quickly. And going, oh my god, what are we getting into for this last lap? We're all within 10 seconds now of first place. And look at how close we are between 8th and, like, 3rd. And again, I'm I'm trying to push my best to be aggressive as possible. And I'm sitting there going, like, we're go about to go through the chicane. Let's let happen. Let's let this happen. And we actually go through pretty cleanly. I'm pretty impressed about that. <laughs> and now I'm watching like a hawk, waiting for one of these mice out here to make a mistake, to run across that field where I can swoop down and take them and grab that prey for that next position. Shio has a poor exit, but his acceleration is keeping him in the fight. We're now going neck and neck, going up this very interesting technical point. Paven's got this issue where he just falls off the track, bounces across the other side, and now I've got Bulldog who does the exact same thing. Everybody's tires must be having some huge issues, and now I am focusing on Flanders. Can there be a way that I can make up another position as I have a little bit of a snap of oversteer, don't have too bad, and then Ring is going the other way because he just decided to give up, I guess. That wasn't really all that cool. And unfortunately, he actually does have a collision with Shio as he's doing these antics. So I think we'll have to talk about that later. And here we go. After a very difficult, challenging practice, a very difficult, challenging qualifying, I start in seventh and I wrangle this car into fifth position. There was so many collisions and bumpers and weird dives that I think we'll have to talk about later. But I think at the end of the day, I'm going to sit back and say, you know, I didn't win. I didn't get first, second, or third. I got fifth out of ten. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with that. I'm going to say that was a damn good race with everything that happened. So versus ending on that, I wanted to take this final part of the video in a slightly different direction. First and foremost, if you're still here watching, thank you. It really means a lot, especially for what I'm about to say. For those of you who know me personally, you will know that I have a skin condition by the name of eczema, which is, in layman's terms, your skin gets dry. And versus it being like an everywhere thing, most people have it in patches and like... For example, if it's winter, you know, it's drier out, so your dry patch becomes drier, so you put more moisturizer on it, and you're pretty good. Mine's the inverse of that, where during the summers, I have an issue sweating, so then I actually get a heat rash in the certain area where I can't sweat. And if you guys can look at back at previous videos, and you can see during summer months where my face and everything gets redder and I look more uncomfortable and all the rest of it. More or less, my point is, on Tuesday, it was so bad that 
I physically couldn't race. And it was like that. I somehow was able to get a little bit better to race on Thursday. And then it took a huge downturn over the weekend. What I wanted to say with all this is Sunday night, I'm feeling terrible and like I can't move. And I look at my wife and I say, you know, I might have to go to the ER. Now, I'm not trying to score sympathy points here. My point is, it had taken me from May until August to finally look at the person I love dearly, to look her in the eyes and say, I need help. So my point with all of this is, if you have a debilitating medical condition that is preventing you from living the life that you deserve to live. If you've got some uncomfortable things going on that you don't know who to talk to, reach out, please, please, please reach out to somebody, anybody and just say, Hey man, I don't know what to do with this. Like I've tried fixing it. It's obviously not getting better. What I, what do I do? Don't Google it. Just, don't bother. You're going to make yourself anxious and it's going to be bad. Just don't do it. But reach out to somebody. Because if they go, hey man, like, you're cool. It's good. Not a problem. And then you go, okay, maybe I wasn't worrying about much. But in a lot of cases, people will go, oh, frick, man. <laughs> you gotta get that looked at. And honestly, I probably should have. But I'm too stubborn and I'm too cheap to go to the doctor and even though I've got okay insurance now, I just I, I still don't like doing it. So the fact that I married somebody who is essentially a nurse, I kind of lucked out. So again, public service announcement. I know a lot of people are struggling right now. I know a lot of people are going through some pretty significant health issues. I know a lot of people who are even more broadly are struggling with job changes or struggling with the economy or struggling with a family or just anything. My point is, if you're struggling about anything, please, 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 please do not hesitate to reach out to anyone. If you have to do it in my comment section, please, please DM me, do whatever. Because I do not want to hear about how you can't live your best life because you've got this big black cloud hanging over your head. I want to see you all thrive and do well. So please, if you're having problems, reach out. For me, all it took was one conversation with my wife. She dug in a drawer. She found some steroid cream. And I can't tell you how big of a difference it made from Saturday night to now Sunday night. I got to deal with the rest of my skin. That, that part's not going to change. But we're now on a path. We're probably in about two, three weeks. I'll be pretty good again. And I can't wait for that. So it's the sooner that you have those conversations the sooner you can get better. So please, whether it be mental health, whether it be physical health, whether it be about relationships or uncomfortable topics, reach out. So enough of my rambling. Again, for those of you who are still here, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to that important message. I really appreciate it all. And I hope all of you are doing okay. I know we've got some crazy times coming ahead in the next couple of months, so please stay safe. Please ask for help and focus on your community and work. If you personally are doing okay, reach out to somebody who you haven't talked to in a while because they might be needing that help. So let's be, I'm not going to say inclusive, but let's be working together to, to create a better community and really worry about our fellow neighbors because this might be interesting. But again, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you've really waited this long, we've got an incredible video coming out on Friday. I'm incredibly excited to share it with you. I think you guys are going to like it too. So again, thanks so much for watching. Hope you guys have a great day today. Take care. Bye.